Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's question is going to be, why do dizzy patients, why does dizziness cause anxiety? And it's actually pretty common that when patients come in with dizziness, they have a little bit of either low level or high level anxiety. And the reason why this is so common is because where dizziness comes from, um, our vestibular system, it kind of gives us that sense of, I don't know where I am in space. I don't know um, where, I don't know if that, you know, I turn one way if I'm going to get dizzy and not know where I am uh, and not be able to function. And so all of that can lead to this increased stress response that then leads to the feelings of anxiety um, or stress or psychological distress. And so we're going to talk about a couple of papers today, just kind of showing how this happens within the brain. Um, it's not just that, oh, if I'm dizzy, um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be anxious. Or if I'm anxious, I may get dizzy. Um, a lot of, a lot of people when, a lot of doctors, when they find somebody that is a little bit of anxious and they're complaining of dizziness, a lot of times they're just set off as, oh, it's a psychological problem. <clears throat> but that's that shouldn't really be the case. We're gonna we're gonna look at how the vestibular system, not only in, not only if you have dizziness, but even if there's just a vestibular imbalance, can cause anxiety. So <clears throat> let's go here. Let's go to our first paper. First paper is from 2016, and it is just showing. Uh, what I just what I just said basically that dizzy patients can get high levels of depression and anxiety and so this paper was just an epidemiological study looking at how dizziness can be or how anxiety can be a symptom in dizziness and so uh, some patients experience dizziness also report psychological distress so they looked at 544 patients experiencing dizziness and they checked a couple of different outcomes. And they found that the incidence of high level depression and anxiety was 11% for depression, 18% for anxiety with patients with dizziness. They also noticed that patients with a higher depression scale or a higher anxiety scale obtained a significantly higher dizziness scores. Okay. And they also saw that, um, so this was for high levels of anxiety, high levels of depression, um, which they didn't really look at uh, experience a trend to experience in some levels, right? But they did see that 20% of patients experiencing dizziness had high levels of psychological stress in the study. Um, so 20% is a decently high number. Um, and like I said, this is just looking at the higher levels of uh, depression, anxiety, where they might be given a medication for their problem. And so um, I just wanted to show you this, how, how dizziness can cause anxiety and depression. But then I wanna show you this next paper, which kind of shows the, the parts of the brain that can be involved. And so this one is a kind of an older paper from July, 2012, and it's called Interactions Between Stress and the Vestibular Compensation. Um, and I just like this because it has a pretty good, it has a pretty good uh, picture that we can talk about. So first, right in the abstract, it says elevated levels of stress and anxiety often accompany vestibular dysfunction. Whether that vestibular dysfunction is dizziness or it's just a vestibular imbalance that can occur and not even, not even the patient can't even experience dizziness. Um, while conversely, complaints of dizziness and loss of balance are also common among patients with panic and anxiety disorders. So again, like you may not even be experiencing dizziness, um, but just by having higher levels of anxiety can give you perception of feeling loss of balance or dizziness or confusion, disorientation. Um, dizziness is one of those words that are just, it's very hard for people to explain and it could be a wide variety of symptoms and it can come just from having higher levels of anxiety. 
And then um, just here, there's been animal studies that have shown that acute stress response is important in promoting compensatory synaptic and neuronal plasticity in the vestibular system and the cerebellum. And so basically we're just showing how that the stress response is very evident, very key, uh, very important in, in changing how the vestibular system and cerebellum, which both kind of deal with this dizziness or feeling dizziness, um, occur. And so let's go to that, that photograph or that figure. And so this is just a box diagram um, with different parts of the brain. And so up here is the limbic system, and the limbic system is more in the big brain, in the cortex. The hypothalamus, we'll just talk about the hypothalamus in general, is deeper, really midline. And so both of these areas are deep in the brain, midline, and the limbic system dealing with more emotions and memory and stress, while the hypothalamus deals with like a lot of autonomic responses, um, regulation of hot and cold, are you hungry or not hungry, um, hungry or full, that's all kind of in there. And then these two areas are in the brainstem. The vestibular nuclei are the first part where that inner ear that controls the vestibular system, gives our vestibular sense, are gonna go into the brainstem and synapse on these vestibular nuclei. And then these vestibular nuclei connect to a wide variety of, of areas, including these three areas listed, but also the cerebellum and other areas within the brainstem. And then lastly, this nucleus, nucleus tractus solitarius, is also in the brainstem. And this allows um, regulation of our autom autonomic responses. So the, the difference between our sympathetic, our fight or flight system, and our parasympathetic, that rest and digest system. So basically what happens is we have a lot of different information coming into this vestibular nuclei. Our vestibular responses, vestibular afferents from that inner ear, but also proprioception coming from our muscles, joints, and then vision also come, and they all kind of correlate in this vestibular nuclei. And if something is a little bit off, where there's this like sensory mismatch, these three senses aren't coming together and saying, this is where I am in space, this is where my vision tells me I am, this is where my vestibular system tells me I am, and this is where my neck muscles and joints are telling me where I am. Then what happens is there is this vestibular imbalance. And this vestibular imbalance can lead to dizziness. And when there's a vestibular imbalance, whether it is leading to dizziness or not, it can come over here and it can activate the limbic system. It can activate the hypothalamus. It can uh, activate the nucleus tractus solitarius. And all of these areas have their own responses. And so the nucleus tractus solitarius can lead to autonomic responses. This can be things like increasing your heart rate. Um, decreasing blood pressure, increasing blood pressure. It can lead to sweaty palms or um, just sweating on your back um, and just that like facial flushing that occurs, okay? Then down here, the hypothalamus, this can lead to the stress axis activation. Stress axis activation would be the increase in cortisol and epinephrine. These two hormones are necessary for that sympathetic fight or flight response that need to um, kind of get away from a bear that's in the woods or that that fight or flight where I'm in danger, I need to run away. And so increasing that cortisol response, increasing that epinephrine response um, is going to further cause more stress, cause more perceived stress and also physiological stress, meaning that um, there is there could lead to some damage within the um, damage from these these hormones like too much cortisol or too much epinephrine and then lastly the vestibular system also connects with the limbic system and the limbic system is like i said there's there's multiple components of the limbic system but it's all kind of deep in the brain more midline and this is where at least up in the cortical region this is where we have our perceived emotion. So our perceived feelings of stress, like I am perceiving this test as stressful. And 
when, when we have this perceived levels of stress, this is what can lead to anxiety. The, lead, the, the need or the feeling of like someone is sitting on my chest and they, they won't get up and I can't, I can't get off. Just this heaviness in my chest, the feeling that I can't move, um, the, the feeling of I can't escape, I can't get out of this danger. Um, and that can lead to a panic attack or it can just lead to high levels of anxiety. And so you can see the vestibular system connects to all of these along with all of these connecting to other ones as well. And so um, this is really how vestibular imbalance or just dizziness in general can lead to these higher levels of anxiety. So so that is today's episode on how dizziness can cause higher levels of anxiety um, and can cause anxiety in patients with just vestibular imbalance. And so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any uh, suggestions for future topics, again, please leave them below. I really appreciate it. And uh, just in general, stay healthy. Thank you.